Start with the furnace. It's crucial that you're making sure you swap out the filter every single month. We do recommend using the cheaper pleated filters as you're gonna get a lot better airflow. It's gonna be better for the length of the furnace. We've got a switch installed so we can turn off the airflow. Remove the magnetic strip. Some units do come with a panel on the front. You can unscrew and the filter comes out this way. Pull out the old filter. New filter. You do want to make sure that you pay attention to the airflow on the filter and you're putting it in the correct direction. Put the magnetic strip back. Turn it back down. We've got the April air humidifier. Control panels here. Filters right here. I'll show you how to swap that out in a minute. We also have a sticker with directions on the furnace on how to run the humidifier, and I'll go over some of that right now as well. We only run the April air humidifier during the winter months. As soon as we get into summer and you turn the furnace off, you can turn the April air off as well, and I'll show you how to do that. On the control panel, we've got numbers one through seven. Typically, you're gonna be in this three or four or five range. What we're trying to do is hit 35 to 40% relative humidity in the house. The control panel does have a humidity readout. Ignore that and go off the reading on these humidistats that we provide. We've got one for each floor, keep them away from windows and vents. Um, current humidity is in the top left corner. High and low is the last 24 to 36 hours. So you're gonna to wanna to average it out. Each floor is gonna be a little different. So keep an eye on that. Little house in the top corner, it'll say okay, high, low, based on the last 24 hours, not on what's actually okay or high or low. So ignore that little house. You will see that when we go from 30 degrees to negative 10, that humidity is gonna drop fast. You'll go from 35% down to the 20s instantly. Always give it a few days to catch back up. If it stays really cold, you're probably gonna to have to turn the humidifier up. And if it stays negative 10, negative 20, you're not gonna hit 35%. That's okay, just turn this guy up, let it run and do its job. Moving over to the filter. You can pop this filter right off there. And we've got the filter in here. Pull out the water line, get that out of the way. This slides out and the cover pops off. Make sure that you buy April Air brand filters. The version of this would be an April Air 600 series. Make sure too, when you get the new filter, on one end of it, it is gonna have a black or blue or red paint stripe. That is up. You always wanna make sure that you put it in with the paint line up, because these are directional. Pop the new filter in, put the water panel back on. that water line back in. Always make sure too that this gets seated so that it drains into the drain pipe, otherwise you're gonna have some leakage when it starts running. When you put this back in, make sure it clicks on both sides, locks in. Open the damper back up. Put the cover back on, you're good to go. You do wanna make sure that you swap this out at least once a year. Not a bad idea to check it midway through the winter, see if it's got a lot of lime scale or anything on it then you may want to swap it out then as well. We've got the control for the ERB air exchanger. It's got numbers 10% all the way up to 100%. You can click this button to change it. Typically you want to stay in that 40 to 60% range because this is what's cycling in your fresh air and taking out the old. The unit itself is right over here. We've got a sticker with directions on how often to clean the filters. I'll show it inside here. These filters you want to pull out and vacuum at least every three months. All you got to do is pop these little hangers out and then the filter will slide out. Vacuum it, pop it right back in. Put these hangers back in and you're good to go. It talks about cleaning the core yearly. The core is this big white thing right here. Pop those screws out, the whole thing slides out, vacuum it, slide it back in there and you're good to go. We've got our water main that supplies water to the whole house and a couple shutoffs. This is your irrigation line. You want to make sure you contact the landscaper in those fall months prior to freezing to come out, turn this off, and blow out all those sprinkler lines. And then recontact them in the spring to come back out and fire it all back up again. The other couple shutoffs we have here are your outside spigots. We do put a sticker on the wall telling you how to turn those off. What you want to do is you turn both of these off, go outside, open the spigot to drain any water remaining in the line and then come back down here and open this relief valve to let any extra water in the line out. I typically take a towel, hold it around it, open it up, 
and then make sure you close that back up and tighten it well. And then leave those off till the following spring when we get out of that freezing weather. Here we've got a water softener. Each system is set up to the water hardness that you have in that house. So you don't have to adjust it, it's all been done already. You do want to make sure you're only using extra coarse solar salt or crystals. Don't use the pellets, they don't work in these units. If you ever do have a question, Water Doctors is awesome. You can give them a call. They're always very helpful.